how do we structure our domain? That's indeed a very valid question and a common struggle that we face when we are starting out with domain driven design. So in this video, I'll walk you through two different ways in which we can approach folder structure in domain driven design. And I'll explain why I think that one of them might be the secret to a readable and smart domain structure. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video we'll talk about how to structure our domain layer efficiently so that we have in the end a very readable and understandable domain structure to our project. Here we are back in this DDD chess application that we have used also for the video on domain services and if you haven't checked out that video I'll leave a link in the description of this one and you can find it even on a card here in the corner upright so you can also take a look at that because it might be very interesting. Now, coming back to our problem, we have here this aggregates folder and what we have here is virtually two aggregates. We have the player aggregate and of course we can see that it's it's an aggregate root and it has some properties and, and some, some behavior. And then we have the second aggregate, which is the game aggregate that also has, uh, has some behavior, has some properties. It also includes some, some value objects, like for instance, the result, the player also uh, has some value objects, like for instance, the name. And there are also two enums that are used actually by this game result. So already we have just two very, very simple aggregates and our folder structure here is a little bit unreadable. And you can imagine what would happen if we have several different aggregates and all the classes that we need for those aggregates will go in this aggregates folder that we have here. So that's really not sustainable and not scalable for an application that will probably evolve and grow a lot. Now, when it comes to structuring the folders and the files in our domain, there are virtually two approaches that we could take. One that's very traditional and it has, of course, its pros and one that's a little bit, I would say, newer to the .NET community, at least. Now, let's start with the first one, and that would be actually the traditional approach, which is a convention based approach. What this means is that, hey, we want to have a good understanding about where we find in our project, for instance, value objects. Where do we find our entities? Where do we find maybe our aggregate roots and so on and so forth? So if we want to remodel that what we have here right now, we could simply go here and say, OK, I want a new directory and I'll call this directory entities. And in this folder, I will put then all the entities and then I'll create a new folder, for instance, which I call value objects. And in this folder, I'll put all the value objects. And then, for instance, I'll have probably a new directory here. Let me add new directory and let's call this directory aggregate roots. And we're good to go. So we can now actually restructure a little bit the things that we have here. So if we take a look at this result, so this result, we see that it is a value object. So we can then simply move this result to this value objects folder and we can do the, it like this. Then we have this player. The player is actually the aggregate root. So we'll move this to the aggregate root. Let's move it there. Uh, then we have this name. This name is also a value object and kind of like it belongs to the player, but it's a value object. So we'll move it here. Uh, so let's do it this way. Then what we have, we have game result, game result reason and game. Now game result and game result reason are actually two enums and they are for that matter, actually no value objects and no entities. But what we could do here following this approach is to create a new folder that we'll call enums and we'll put this game result, for instance, in the enums folder, game result and game result reason. And then we have structured our domain and then we have this game and the game is actually also the aggregate root. So we'll move this to the aggregate root. Now, what we can do here in this case, we could theoretically just, well, remove this folder aggregates because we kind of like don't need it anymore. So we have here delete and we would be good to go. So that's the folder structure that resulted. Now, of course, this folder structure has definitely some advantages. Now, if I want, for example, to have a very clear overview in my domain layer about, OK, where do I find all the value objects that I might need? Where do I find entities? Where do I find enums or where do I find aggregate roots? Kind of like in this way, we structure this 
application or this layer very, very conventionally. So we have names that kind of like define concepts that we use in our application. And in those folders, we have then classes that kind of like in a way belong to that concept. So that's a good way to do this. But however, of course, it also has a downside. Because for instance, if I want to do any changes to the game aggregate, and the thing is that I will have them to go and to jump over to different type of folders to find out, for instance, okay, we have this result. Where is this result? Ah, it is a value object. So we need to go to the value objects and then we will find the result. So the idea is that in a real scenario where, of course, this layer will be richer than that, it's actually very cumbersome, I would say, to kind of like navigate through it and understand, okay, where do I find all the stuff that belongs to a certain aggregate? So that wouldn't be that straightforward. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. That would be a good way to promote this video and make sure that also other people that might be interested will see this video on YouTube. And if you are not already subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button also and stay up to date with everything that we publish here on the code wrinkles channel the second approach when it comes to structuring our domain project is to concentrate actually on the aggregate itself so the main concept here is that when we have an aggregate we want to have everything regarding that aggregate in one single spot so when we need to do some changes or when we need to troubleshoot something or anything we know that if we have a problem with a certain aggregate we go to a certain folder where everything regarding that aggregate is placed so let's implement that let's add the new directory here so first we know that we have two aggregates so we have the game aggregate and we have the player ag aggregate so let's call this directory player and now we'll move everything that belongs to the player in this player. So we have, first of all, the aggregate root, which is this one. So let's move that. Then let me go to the player and understand what we have. So we have here also the name. In this case, we take the name and we also move it here. And we should be good with this one. Then the second aggregate that we have is the game aggregate. So we'll go once again and create a directory for that. And let's call it game. And now we start once again from the aggregate root, which is the game itself. And then we we'll look a little bit into the game and we know or we see here that in the game we also have this game result and with this is a value object so let's move it back here so now we have also the game result here and to the game result we also have those two enums that belong to the result itself so we'll go to the enums folder and what we'll do here is we'll also move these enums to our game folder so game result and game result reason which is okay. Now the thing is I have also created here a folder where I have this exception where is a rating change exception. The idea here is that when we have here a player and we see that on the player we have this uh, behavior increasing the rating and decreasing the rating. Now if for any reason like we would try to decrease uh, this rating by a value that kind of like maybe it's not supported then we would need to throw an exception and that exception would be the rating change exception. So in this case means that this rating change exception actually also belongs to the player aggregate. So we will move it also here to the player folder. And now we can delete everything that we don't need anymore. So we can delete that. We can also delete that folder. We'll also delete the enums folder. So let's delete the enums folder. We'll also, the exception folder will keep because we might have exceptions in our domain that belong uh, for instance to domain services and not to a certain aggregate so we'll keep the exception folders for now and then uh, we'll also delete this value objects folder so let me edit and then delete that cool so now we have deleted this now we see that the folder structure is i would say more readable than it was before because once again now we have everything that kind of like relates to an aggregate at or in the same place and this is something or that's very popular in the vertical slices architecture where we want to structure our folders and files in vertical slices based on functionality now in our domain layer the functionality itself regards or it goes through this idea of aggregates so we can structure the folders based on aggregates so each aggregate will get its own folder and everything that belongs to the certain aggregate value objects uh, other entities even exceptions 
everything we can place in the same folder. And that would be very, very smart because whenever we know that we need to do something with the game aggregate, we know that the only folder in which we need to look to find everything is the game folder. So we don't need to care about anything else. We just go to the game folder and we have everything there. The same goes for the player. If you want to change anything to the player, we know that we have this player folder. We go to that folder and we have everything there. Now, the only thing is that when you are building out your domain, you might find yourself in a place, for instance, where you might have some value objects or some entities that are kind of like, well, data structure or domain specific data structure that will be reused in more aggregates and in that case we already have this folder and the concept in domain driven design that is called shared kernel now in the shared kernel here we have placed right now the classes for aggregate root for what an entity is or for what a value object is now let's imagine for instance that we have a fitness tracking application in that fitness tracking application, we might have the concept uh, of height and, and weight. And those concepts would be, of course, probably value objects because they don't really have a thread of continuity. So we don't care about their identity. We just care about some values. But the idea is that in that case, height and weight would probably be some value object that would be reused in several different aggregates. So when you find yourself in this type of scenario, then you can come to this shared kernel folder and add those data structures in the shared kernel because they are shared throughout or by uh, or throughout the different aggregates that might use them. So that would be also a good approach for that. Now I have named this folder shared kernel because that's also how Eric Evans names this concept in his book, Domain Driven Design, Tackling Complexity in the Heart of Software or the Blue Book. But you can name this folder maybe common or shared or whatever makes sense to you. The idea is only that in this folder, we just place the type of data structures that will be reused throughout different aggregates. In my opinion, the secret to a clean and readable domain structure is to structure it around aggregates. So it's actually the second approach that we have looked through in which for each aggregate, we get a folder and in that folder, we place really everything that belongs to that certain aggregate. This also gives a taste of vertical slicing or slicing the application based on functionality. And it makes things very easy to find because if you need to change anything on a certain aggregate, you know that there is only one place you should look to and that is the folder that contains that specific aggregate and you would find everything regarding that aggregate in that folder. If you have enjoyed this video, once again, please hit the thumbs up button. That's really important because that's the way you can make sure that other people would also find this content easily on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell button so that you are always notified when new things happen here on the Code Wrinkles channel. And if you have any questions or feedback or ideas, or if you just get, want to get in touch with me, head over to the comment section and leave a comment below and I would be more than happy to get a discussion started. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.